It's becoming impossible to live in a modern society without being connected all the time. When you're connected, you're connected to a piece of software usually that you have no idea what it's doing with your data. You don't know uh, who is making the decisions, making the tweaks, whose interest is this software defending, right? What I've noticed over the past few years is the major problems, at least in my opinion, are centralization, power, and trust. Those, those are the big problems that we have right now. And this push to decentralization is something that's very exciting because now we can take the power back. We have this Discord channel and, and some, some person was saying the other day, oh, you know, I'm not sure that we need an operating system anymore because there's a lot of serverless code going on now and, and people just run these, these like AWS Lambda functions. And, and, and then my answer was, well, and, and what do you think is the runtime that supports your Lambda code, right? It's Linux, like it's running on, on, on a Linux. So, so people, they just don't realize how pervasive an, an operating system is, uh, and so they forget. Yeah, I, like you said, you just you take it for granted because it's there. And I mean, personally myself, I was never thinking, oh, we need a blockchain operating system. But that's again because I take for granted the fact that every day I'm working on Windows, or every day I'm working on Linux, or I'm working on a Mac machine. It just works. Everything just works because we're at that stage with this technology that you don't have to think about it. And hopefully, at some point in the future, with blockchain, it's going to be that way as well, where I just spin up, you know, my blockchain OS, and everything just works. You can you can think of a blockchain as a some some hardware almost, right? It's it's like infrastructure. If you want to run your stuff directly on, on top of this infrastructure, then you're going to have to deal with uh, the differences between different blockchains, right? So if you have an operating system, maybe you can iron out these differences and you write things in an environment that isolate you from all these, these idiosyncrasies of, of different blockchains. So the way I see it, there are uh, several different paths that lead to towards the blockchain. Uh, one of them, obviously, is the fear of missing out, right? Then there is the more idealistic type of, of, of developer. When we're interacting with these, these online softwares, the, the, this, this software is, runs on a server that is owned by a, a corporation or perhaps a, a government and you don't know exactly what this code is doing with your data and so what the blockchain movement is trying to do in a sense is to make at least part of this backend the part that has the most vital logic make this open. I think that the final final approach towards the blockchain is a bit of, 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 of vanity, right? So you, you build something and you put it to run on the blockchain, and this thing is gonna stay there. And it's almost like you you carved it out of stone. It's gonna stay there, it's gonna stay running. And uh, so I don't know, what, what do you think your viewers, do you think there's a different path that they're following that, that demanded some kind of uh, blockchain content from you? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a huge opportunity to dive in and start working on pretty much the infrastructure of the rest of the internet, right? We're kind of in a completely different era, like you said, where we're moving away from everything centralized to more decentralized technology. And for me, that's super ex exciting. And as a young developer, if I can build a really strong skill set in blockchain, I feel like that's gonna be very beneficial in the future. And I think that's what a lot of my viewers are really thinking about. How do I set myself up for the next era? How do I kind of get ahead of the curve and not be learning blockchain technology late? Uh, recently, I've actually been looking at a few people who have built decentralized applications. And one of the main thing that I notice is that the best applications have the best front end still, have the best back end, are still the fastest, are still the most efficient. And so obviously we still need to write really great smart contracts, but we still need those other aspects of traditional development, at least from my perspective. When you're writing a, a, an application, it's usually separated into part that is user facing and then a the part that runs on the cloud or in this case runs on, on the blockchain. 
if you want your, a, a, a part of your application to have all those nice properties, you want it to be immutable, right? You want, once something happened, it's there forever. Nobody can, uh, can, can change it or deny it. So in, in a sense, w what is very frustrating and very difficult to do is when you try to code uh, a more sophisticated backend in solidity, right? That is, that is a, an exercise in self-flagellation. Uh, so what we want is to allow you to bring into the parts of your program that you want these guarantees, you, you allow you to also bring the tools of, of your trade, right? The, the stuff that you're used to, maybe you want to write part of it in, in, in JavaScript, maybe you want to write part of it in Python or, or, or C++ or whatever. Whatever is the tool that you use on Linux, hopefully you'll be able to bring them and, and keep using it the way you, the way you like. I'm a professor as well, so I know that the best way of learning something is to teach it. So uh, how has this, this journey been for you to, to start playing with, uh, with, with, with blockchain technology and Solidity in, in, in particular? Yeah, this has been really exciting. For me, I already have experience programming, so picking up the language itself, Solidity, was not extremely difficult. For me, um, what was the challenging part, although still not super complicated, was really understanding the concepts behind blockchain, the security aspect of it, and just knowing the basics of what is a block? What does mining mean? What are transactions? How are these secured? And once I was able to gain that understanding, which took maybe a few days of research, watching some videos, consulting with guys like you, uh, I really felt a lot more confident jumping into Solidity and starting to write some of this code. Once I had that, it was very rapid to get into smart contracts and start using some of my pre-existing knowledge to actually create some functioning applications that I can make live right now. When you wanted to write a, a, a piece of software, it, you, you had to write your code to run directly on, on the hardware. And then quickly people realized that this is, this is not workable. They created these, these programming languages that can generate the machine code. And so the, the role of an, of an operating system is to figure out most of the stuff that you might want to do and uh, offer it to programmers in a way that hides a lot of the complexity. So in, in the middle, like next few years, uh, we'll hopefully have a pretty nice solution for uh, computation scalability. So this means that you'll be able to run a lot of your code that you need to be trusted. You'll be able to run that inside of a, a Cartesian machine and the Cartesian machine will become ever more powerful. I'm not on the development side of the Cartesian machine, so I don't know exactly what's gonna be going into that. Uh, but as a developer and someone who's ideally gonna be using that, what I would like to see is a world where a lot of the limitations that currently exist are just gone and I don't really have to consider those, right? We would really want to create that, that standard library type situation. So you, you will write your code in whatever programming language you want. Uh, you will access this library. Maybe it's going to be uh, via a JSON RPC interface or something that is really accessible to every programming language that you can think of. Uh, and there will be this, this standard library of things that you might want to do in a blockchain and you would expect somebody else to have figured it out, right? That's really what I'm looking for and I have tons of ideas of stuff I would love to implement on the blockchain and with my current expertise or understanding of it, uh, I don't feel confident to do that, but hopefully with the Cartesi machine, I will have the confidence to go in and build those type of applications and know that they're gonna be secure and that I'll be able to do that uh, in a way that's not gonna cost you know hundreds of thousands of dollars for my users to go and interact with the smart contract. Thanks, Tim. It's a pleasure. No problem, yeah. Thank you guys for having me in this. It's been awesome to see all the, you know, setup and production around me too. Very cool.